Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video on laryngeal hemiplegia or paralysis of the throat. My name is Simon Hennessy here at Angus Eli Jack Wayne Hospital. So paralysis of the throat is the most common inspiratory issue we see with wind problems here. And the horses that present, present because of damage to the nerve that supplies the muscles of the throat that are responsible with pulling the cartilages out of the way so we can get maximal inflow of air during inspiration, during exercise. These horses usually present because they're making a noise and in the lower grades of this condition they tend to be a whistle with more severe injuries being associated with a roaring noise or even exercise intolerance. So why does this occur? Well, if we look at the anatomy of the horse, we can see once again there's been poor planning uh, on the part of the anatomical layout of the horse. So the nerve that's required to stimulate the muscles of the throat should just travel from the brain on its parent nerve, the vagus nerve, down to the throat and innervate, as you would expect. However, our nerve, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, jumps on the vagus train, but it behaves a bit like a passenger who falls asleep on the train and forgets to get off at its correct stop. Misses the stop and misses a couple more, wakes up somewhere around the base of the heart, gets off, loops around the subclavian artery, and then legs it back to the throat. The problem here is that this nerve has now looped around a major artery of the heart, which now acts as an anchor. So when we think of the horses that tend to be in, to suffer from this condition, we usually are dealing with horses that are tall, lanky, long-necked types of horses. And when we ask the breeders about their development, they'll often have gone through periods of rapid growth or growth spurts when they're developing. But also when we think about nerves, we know that from seeing other people that have suffered from nerve injuries, nerves heal slowly. And they also grow at their own rate and often do not keep pace with these rapid increases in muscle and skeletal growth. And because our nerve is now anchored around the subclavian artery, that nerve can't just move with this sudden development of muscle and skeleton, and so our nerve gets strained and it gets damaged. And that causes an interruption to the normal electrical or nervous supply to our muscles in the throat. And when the muscles don't re receive the nervous supply that they require, well then they start to shrivel and atrophy and they're not able to pull that cartilage out of the way to the level that they should. Now the level of grade of injury that is present has been documented in various scales over the years but probably one of the easiest ones to understand is the lane scale and that's a five grade scale where a grade one larynx is a larynx that when we look at it with a scope we have two cartilages that are symmetric and synchronous in their movements. They're basically a pair. They move together exactly the same. With a grade two larynx, we have asynchrony and asymmetry between our cartilages. One side, the left side, which is all, nearly always the side that is affected, and which on scope will actually look like the right side because it's the horse's left side, it moves different to the right side and is often lazier. However, with a grade two larynx, when we put that horse under pressure by either holding its breath or asking it to perform exercise, it is able to fully open up that airway and maintain that opening during exercise. And these horses often do not make a noise and certainly don't need any surgical intervention. A grade three larynx is similar to a grade two larynx in that we have two cartilages that are asymmetric and asynchronous. However, it tends to be more evident on a grade three. However, when we put this horse under pressure, it too is able to maximally open that airway during exercise. However, it's not able to maintain it during the exercise. And so we get slight collapse of our cartilage, which loses some of the tension on the vocal cord that is normally present. And so now we have a loose vocal cord, which is able to be sucked in when we've got maximal negative pressure present with inspiratory air going by and sucked into the airflow and so it creates a noise and this is usually a whistle. So these are ty the types of horses that will often be treated by a hob day procedure or removal of the vocal cord and the two ventricles or saccules beside it, the two vocal cords. A grade four larynx is massively asymmetric and asynchronous. It cannot achieve maximal opening of the throat and 
a lot of the times we'll be dealing with a throat, a cartilage that has a bare flicker, but at least some level of muscle that is present to withstand the negative suction pressure that occurs on maximal inflow of air during inspiration. But still, with a grade 4 larynx, you can expect to lose a good 50% of your airway. A grade 5 larynx is a completely paralyzed airway. The cartilage literally just hangs there, so straight away when you start exercise, you're dealing with half an airway, and because you don't have any muscle to pull that cartilage and stop it from collapsing across, you can lose 80, 90% of your airway diameter, and you essentially have a horse that's breathing through a keyhole. Now it's important to remember that horses don't read the books, and so we can have some horses that fit into a scale of maybe a grade 2 or a grade 3 when we scope them at rest. However, when we send them out to do exercise and they become fatigued and we put a lot of pressure on that muscle, then that they can start to collapse the cartilage similar to a grade 5 that we've just spoke about. And this type of a larynx is what we call a grade C. And it basically is one to keep an eye on because you can have horses that look good on a standing scope but end up being a complete disaster when under maximal pressure at exercise. And finally, the last thing to say is that this is a progressive condition. So the strain that occurs to your nerve at the start is not a once-off injury. It can continue and become more progressive and degeneration of that nerve can continue over a number of years. So the most common thing that we tend to see is a yearling that might have a grade 2 larynx. And then we see them later on in life when they're a 2-year-old or a 3-year-old and they become a grade 3 and they're making a whistle and there's a feeling that it's affecting their, their exercise and so they'll often get a hub day procedure performed at this time. But then you see them later on in life as a three-year-old or late three-year-old or even a four-year-old and they've become, they're being represented to you with exercise intolerance and making a roaring noise and essentially they're a grade four or a grade five and in need of a tieback procedure. And this is the classic progression of this disease and that while it doesn't happen in all cases, it certainly happens in quite a significant amount. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Stay tuned next week when we'll talk about the Hobday procedure.